We are out here in beautiful eastern central Florida at the Yarborough Ranch and JK Yarborough is a fifth generation rancher here in central Florida. JK, how many acres are we on? So we operate on about 1700 acres okay. and we run about between five to 700 head of, of brood or mother cows. It fluctuates, but that's about how much we operate on. So I just heard a couple terms that I'm not familiar with, and I know that you have a lot of different types of cows out here. So can you back it up and explain a, a brood, a head, a cow, a calf? <laughs> so yeah, some general terms that we use. So calf is a young bovine animal. Okay, the smaller ones that we saw Ex at the other part of the ranch. Exactly. Okay. A cow is a female bovine. Oh. So. Yeah, uh, a bull is a male bovine. Okay. A heifer is a female bovine that has not had a calf or is less than three years of age. Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> so a heifer is a cow, but a cow is not a heifer. Can be, but not always, yes. Okay. Exactly. I'm so, getting it. Uh, a steer is a castrated male uh, bovine. Okay. And then some other terms that we sometimes have, uh, cryptorchid is actually a, a male bovine that has one testicle retained in the body after development. Oh. A free martin is a female bovine that was born co-twin to a male. So if the cow had twins, mm -hmm. one's male and one's female, that female we would usually refer to as a free martin and she will usually be sterile uh, or infertile and so you have to keep that in mind because if you're trying to keep her as a brood, you know, a mother, right. it's not going to happen no matter how hard you try. So. Wow. So. You know, I didn't think about twins, cows having twins. How often does that happen? It's not very common. Uh, probably every four or five years, perhaps, we'll have one that has twins. Um, and it depends on the mothering, uh, mothering ability. So sometimes twins, if there's twins, then that means that she's drawing, those cats are drawing twice as much nutrition away from the mother. So oh. it's actually a depletion on her part. So just naturally, sometimes she will fight off or kick one calf away. Oh. And sometimes that one will steal milk from some other ones, or if, usually when that happens, we'll be able to identify it because it won't be as, uh, uh, it'll be a little bit malnourished. Mm -hmm. So we'll be able to identify it so we can bring it in and then bottle, field, bottle feed it from there. And how many different, I mean, is, is breed of cow the right thing to say? Mm -hmm. So there's a bunch of that look different and they're all coming towards us. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, there are, we use a couple of different breeds here. So different breeds of cattle specialize in different things. They have different genetic traits and abilities. So um, we use a lot of larger muscular producing uh, cattle mm -hmm. or, or bulls to produce our cattle that are going to go into our beef market. Is that what chain. a black Angus is? So or? Angus cattle are known for more intermuscular fat, so the quality of meat product. Okay. Some, not so much as the amount, the quantity of meat produced, but the quality of meat produced. They do produce a little bit higher quality of product. Okay. There's so much to learn about cows. <laughs> yeah, there is. <laughs> and it's not just like the land. You were saying earlier that the grasses play uh, a major role. A major so role. Exactly. Yeah. If we're growing cattle, you know, the cattle, they're using the, the grass, the forages as their nutrition. So to be able to grow better cattle, you have to be a good grass farmer, a better forage grower. Wow. And so to be a good forage grower, you have to have good soil. So it's all, it's all a big cycle. So five generations ago, when your family, they had to clear the land and plant grass, I'm guessing? It so wasn't, because this isn't normally grasslands, right? Some of it, yeah, so you're correct. Some of this did need to be cleared out. What we're standing on would be considered an improved pasture. Okay. So our native forage varieties, uh, they're, they're adapted to Florida soils and they don't produce a lot of uh, good nutrition in the, in the forage itself because our soils naturally don't have good nutrition either. Wow. And so uh, we have introduced some other species and some genetic breeding of, of plants to, begin, to create some species of forages that produce better nutrition for the animals uh, when we apply that forage out there. Really cool. JK, thank you so much for walking us through the different types of cows and bovines mm -hmm. and showing us a little bit about your property and looks like they're on the run so it's time for us to take a hike too.